Hey everybody, this is Joe Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to The Bench. I was introduced to Garnet amplifiers when I found that PA head, I think the part number was BTO 260 PA, something like that. We actually interacted with that amp already in the channel before. The chassis was all messed up and the amp had a bunch of problems with it. So I pulled the transformers out of that PA head and that's the transformers that I used for the high watt build I did earlier in the channel. I'll put a little link in the corner there if you wanna check that out. Garnet Amps was a company out of Canada. They made a whole range of tube amplifiers. They're one of the two big amplifier companies from Canada, the, the biggest one, of course, being Trainer. They still operate to some extent. I think they have a, like a, a distortion pedal now, and I know they still offer the original owner of Garnet Amps' tube book, whose uh, name was Gar Gills. I believe Gar has unfortunately passed away. I think it's his son now that runs the website and still prints and sells the book. When I picked up that PA ad, I was looking through the schematics. We are gonna look at some schematics here. All these schematics are from el34world.com. They have a huge schematic library. When I want to look at schematics for any tube amps, that's the first place I go is look through their library. So that's where all these schematics are from. I don't know if it was people on that forum who drew these schematics, probably not, but that is the repository for the schematics. So thank you to both those groups of people, I suppose. So yeah, Garnet Amps had a whole bunch of interesting designs and I came across a couple different amps that had a built-in fuzz circuit they called the Stinger. There's essentially two designs. There's an early design that is not what's shown here on this schematic. I'm gonna zoom in. We're gonna talk about this first and then we'll look at the one I'm actually gonna try and build. So this is what I think is the second version of the Stinger and the one that was more commonly used by Gar. So you can see here we have coming off of the first, after the first uh, triode amplification stage. Oh, you can't see that. After the first triode stage, it taps off here, coming down to the grid of this 6JW8 pentode. 6JW8 is a half pentode, half triode in one package. So we've got a little pentode here and it's set up just for heavy distortion. There's gonna be a lot of gain of a pentode. And yeah, you're definitely gonna get clipping from a circle like this out of there. Pretty standard setup though, with the uh, plate and screens having their own supplies, cathode resistor bypassed, foot switch to lift the uh, cathode off ground, turn the effect off. And then we have a pretty simple like treble bleed circuit here with a small cap and then a control to ground and then an output cap here to a volume control. This was, I believe the second version of the Stinger and I think the much more commonly used one. It's a simpler circuit and probably more stable and more reliable. The version we're gonna make, however, is the earlier version which used both sides of a 6A and 8 tube. 6A and 8, like the 6JW8 before, is a half pentode, half triode. But in this case, you can see here with this line coming across and back down, the uh, triode here is direct coupled to the plate of the pentode. The cathode of the pentode is connected directly to ground when the foot switch is engaged. We have the same treble bleed uh, circuit here, like a tone control, and a still volume pot out. But this is the more interesting circuit, I think, with the direct coupled uh, dual amplifier stage. And just looking at it, I would, I think it's fair to assume that this is going to be much more sensitive to specific tube characteristics. My guess is that this was not reliable enough. You would have to like go through different six A and A tubes to find one that really worked. And from a manufacturing standpoint, that's just not as useful. And so going over to just a straight standard pentode stage was probably the way to go. And you probably still got an, a fuzz effect that was sufficient to do the job that they were looking for the Stinger to do. So my goal here is to recreate this circuit in a standalone pedal format. First off, I wanna give a shout out to the DIY Stomp Boxes user, who is all hedges, all one word. I'll put a link to their forum post in the description. They did up a circuit that tried to emulate the sound of the Stinger with all discrete, small, like Stomp Box size components. So MOSFETs, JFETs, stuff like that at standard like nine volt. That's very cool, great project. However, what I'm trying to do here is actually recreate Garnet Stinger in a pedal format with a 6A and 8 tube with high voltage, exactly as it appears in this schematic here. This is the L90 from the Rebel series. I also want to just mention here in the schematics on EL34 World, you'll come across this circuit and it's labeled the BTO overdrive circuit. There's some issues with this schematic here that I, I wanna talk about in a second. I think there are multiple errors here. And so yes, we'll be basing the design off the this schematic here from the Rebel series. I think there's another amp that has the same design circuit inside, but this is the one I have printed out at least. To make it easier to look at what's actually happening here in the schematic, I'm just going to, or I should say, I've already gone and drawn out this schematic in a way we're more used to looking at tubes. So we come in to a pentode, 
we have a five nano powered input cap, a 10 meg resistor to ground, and then the cathode is grounded. This setup, if you're not familiar, is grid leak bias. As a consequence of all the electrons flowing from the cathode to the grid, some of them will collect on the plate. Normally this isn't an issue for standard cathode bias tubes. However, in this case, our cathode is directly grounded. And so those electrons would want to escape out from the grid connection to ground through a, a smaller grid leak resistor. But in this case, we have a big 10 meg, which is going to cause a sort of blockage of electrons on the control grid, which is then going to negatively bias the control grid relative to cathode, which will control the flow of electrons. So that's how bias is built here. We also prevent the electrons from leaving through this five nanofarad cap. So this is grid leak bias. I'll put a link to a better explanation on grid leak bias in the description as well. So yeah, signal comes in, 10 meg grid leak resistor. This is the pentode. Here's our screen connection with 100 nanofarad cap off that. Plate connection here. We have our direct coupling into the second, the triode stage of the uh, 6A and 8. 200K cathode resistor, 479 nanofarad bypass cap, 1.5 meg uh, plate resistor. And then out of the output cap, a little tone circuit here. Here's our treble cut control and then our volume output. If you're looking at this and thinking, huh, that look, kind of looks familiar, uh, that's because this more or less is, it's kind of like a fuzz face with tubes. Fuzz face has the exact same two amplifier direct coupled setup. The first stage has the cathode directly grounded. It's kind of like a fuzz face with a tone control, except with tubes. Is this an intentional recreation by GAR of the fuzz face circuit with a tube? I don't know. Definitely don't have any information to back that up, but that is what it looks like. This schematic here, when you look at it quickly, it looks pretty similar to the 6A and 8 setup. We have the, the pentode, directly coupled here to the grid of the triode. However, the, the more you look at this, the more you start to see there's problems with this drawing. I've drawn it out the same way I did before with the other circuit here. I'm pretty sure this, this drawing here is incorrect or has multiple issues. The first one being that the input is being drawn coming into the screen grid. If you look here, here's our input from the input jacks coming up here, but it's coming into the screen grid. This is our plate. The tube is upside down. So this is our plate, this is our screen grid, this is our control grid, and this is our cathode. A pento does have another grid, the suppressor grid, but it's internally connected to the cathode and so it's not shown on this drawing. But this connection here, coming in from the input jacks, it's going into the screen. If this is upside down, the bottom grid is the screen. And then it shows the B plus here is connected through the 4.7K into the control grid. So first off, I think this drawing is wrong. This line, this should be connecting here like that, and then this is not correct. And this line should be connecting here, and this is not correct. I believe that's error number one. And then error number two, I believe the cathode is missing a ground connection. So there should be a ground connection coming off here for ground for the cathode. Because without that, what's drawn, or what was actually drawn here is this, where we have a cathode resistor coming over to the grid and then no, no ground connection for the cathode directly, it can either connect to ground after the big 10 meg grid resistor, or well, I should say in this case, cathode resistor, if this switch is closed, if it's not, it's connecting to ground through the 10 nanofarad. I'm pretty sure this wouldn't work. It definitely wouldn't work because we're inputting to the screen and putting high voltage on the control grid. That, I think that would probably destroy the tube. I don't know what the max voltage is for the control grid for this pento, but I'm assuming it's not 100 volts or whatever it would be here. But inputting to the screen is not going to help, I don't think. And then the huge cathode resistor of 10 megs, I don't think that would work either. Pretty sure that this drawing is incorrect on, on multiple fronts. Now it's possible, maybe I just don't know enough about pento design that this actually would work and it was an, an upgrade or a change that Gar went for. If that's the case, I'd love to hear about it, but I don't, looking at this, I don't think this would work. I also don't think it's a coincidence that the components we have here are the same components we have in the other drawing, where the 10 meg here is just the grid leak resistor. We're just missing a ground connection for the cathode, and then this 10 nanofarad with its switch could just be a simple, like, high roll-off switch, like a cap off the input just to roll off some highs in case it was a little bright. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this schematic is wrong. I'm 99% sure the, the screen and grid connections are wrong here, but also I think there's missing connection for ground. This 10 meg is not in the right spot. It would be if this ground was here, but, uh, and then this is maybe just a, a bright cap or a, a high cut cap that I don't see it on any BTO amps out in the wild. So I'm not hundred percent sure. So this is the circuit we're going to try and recreate with the 6A and 8, the direct coupled uh, triode from the pentode. It's a more interesting circuit. I believe this one looks correct 
So we're gonna try and make this in pedal format. To facilitate that, I've collected a couple components. Uh, the first one being a transformer. So this is a Hammond 2C, no, 261C6. So this is a pretty small little tube transformer, power transformer. And we can see here, we have a 250 volt center tap secondary. So that's gonna be 125 across each side or 250 across the whole thing. That's of course AC voltage. When we rectify that and combine the two halves together, we're going to get approximately 250 times 1.414, which I think comes out to comes out to about 350 volts. It's gonna be less than that, especially if it's loaded down with a tube, but there shouldn't be much current through the tube, so it won't load down that much. So it's gonna be somewhere between like 325 to 350, something like that. We have a 6.3 volt heater winding here with a one amp output. The tube is a 6A and 8. So this is the Sylvania data sheet. And we can see here our heater voltage for 6A and 8 is 6.3 volts. So that's right on. Heater current is 450 milliamps. So that's no problem. We have one amp of current available. Our maximum ratings down here, the triode is 330 volts on the plate, 330 volts on the pentode, 330 volts on the screen of the pentode. With the large plate resistors and screen uh, grid resistors here, I don't think we're going to be seeing close to those voltages. So that should be fine. And I think based on the size of the transformer here, we shouldn't have an issue finding a enclosure that can fit this size. In fact, I already know we don't because I've actually tried building with this transformer and this closure already. I forget exactly what this project was. This is just one of those enclosures that I've had that I tried to build some other tube thing. I don't remember. Um, sometimes you just try something that doesn't work out and you kind of forget. But I do recall this will fit inside this enclosure just about. So that's gonna mount in there. That'll get wired up. Gonna use terminal strips inside for the uh, tube socket mounting, it would be easy enough to just mount the tube socket on the external here, you know, wherever, somewhere here or something like that. For a more rugged build, I think putting the tube inside the pedal makes sense. And we should have enough in this big old enclosure to make that happen. And so I believe I had this mounted on the inside, but something like this. So the tube would sit inside the socket there and then I solder off the solder lugs here. But this of course would be turned inside the enclosure. This enclosure size, if you're curious, is a 1590D. So the way this would sit is the transformer is gonna sit in there just like that. There is just enough clearance to make it over that lid, no problem. And then the tube itself is gonna sit inside one of these two brackets here. I need to get different screws a little wobbly. Uh, something like that. If there's qu not quite enough clearance, there has to be enough clearance for the tube itself and for the pins. But if there's not, I have more of these standoffs here. We can extend this out a little bit. And then I believe this screw hole was for a terminal strip. This one here probably as well. These probably as well. So those will be all terminal strips. The input and output jacks will be right here on top. These jacks, I think one of these was a power switch. The other one was the power cable out. It'll be a, a captive cable, built-in cable, and then a little fuse holder right there, like so. That'll be like a half amp fuse, should be plenty, slow blow. And then here's our two potentiometer holes. So pots will go in there, one for the tone control and one for volume. I didn't come up with anything for an indication light, uh, but it could go in there, it would just tap off the primary of the uh, output transformer. But I'll see if I really care about getting to that. And then of course we have a hole for the bypass switch. So that is the general plan. Uh, if this sounds interesting to you, I'd love uh, to have you come back. We're gonna start building this next week and hopefully we get to good, some good progress. I would love to finish it and get to a sound test, but we'll see how it goes. What I remember from building in this enclosure before is it gets really tight between the, uh, the tube socket here and the terminal strips. And so we're gonna have to plan ahead and make sure we have good space and clearance for all those parts. But yeah, it should be very interesting and hopefully we will find out just how much of a bear this circuit will be. If it'll be a really raucous fuzz or if we'll have to try a bunch of different 6A and 8 tubes to make it work. If that sounds interesting to you, I'd love to see you next week. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have any comments about the uh, the circuit here, the Garnet, if you have experience with the Stinger circuit or the Garnet you have, I'd love to hear about that. Uh, otherwise, I hope to see you next week. I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.